Welcome to the Privacy Wayfinder. It is December 2022, and I made the switch from Apple iOS to this Pixel 5 running Graphene OS in December 2021. So it's been one year since I made the switch. I've loved it. I've been on this device since then, never had a need to move back to Apple, which I'm glad. So what I'm gonna do is this will be kind of like my one year review. I'll go through all of the apps. Um, and three months ago, I did a nine month video. So I can kind of talk through some of the changes as well that I've made. But let's start from the beginning. Let's start up the phone. And this is what it looks like when it starts up. Here's a warning saying that your device is loading a different operating system. It starts off with it saying Google here. And then it switches over into saying Graphene OS. So let me enter in my SIM pin here. And once you enter your SIM pin, there's a fingerprint reader on the back, but when you restart your phone, uh, you're gonna need to enter your pin anyway. So when I put my fingerprint uh, on, it's saying that uh, the pin is required. So I'm gonna put in my pin. And now we are in. Here's the home screen. If I swipe up, we can go through all of the apps that I have on my Pixel 5. Let's run through some of the apps that I have on here. Up at the top left, I'm running Aegis for my 2FA codes. So if I click on that, it's gonna ask me for my fingerprint. You can opt not to use fingerprint, uh, but here you can see that I have all my different codes. You can kind of scroll through. And this is an offline 2FA code generator. So it's not hooked up to the internet. I think my last video I had Authy, so I completely moved away from Authy. With Authy, you need to sign up for an online account. Your codes are stored, even though encrypted, they're stored in the cloud. Uh, so I made the switch, redid all of my 2FA codes for all of my accounts, imported them into Aegis, completely offline, hold down on the app. We go to app info. We can look at the permissions, you can see that here, no permissions are granted. We have no network access or anything. As always, I've talked about this in many videos, I disable sensors in most of my apps. So very uh, minimal if, actually in this case, <laughs> no permissions, unless I need to scan a code, a scan a QR code, then I would uh, have the camera on just for that time I need to scan the code. Next up, I have AntennaPod. This is where I download all of my podcasts. As you can see, I love listening to personal finance podcasts. So here, it's a fully fledged, I guess you could call it podcast grabber, very similar to Apple's podcast app. Here, if I go to subscriptions, these are all my subscriptions that I have. If I wanted to add a subscription, let's say I wanted to find another personal finance podcast, I can click on the bottom here. I'm just gonna search, let's just say finance. I'm gonna hit search. So here's the list of my search. What's actually really odd is that the thumbnails are not showing up. So that actually has never happened, but I mean, it's happening now, so I'm just gonna keep it in this video, something to be aware of. Um, again, I think it just might be something with the app that's kind of, kind of odd. But you can see here, once I've downloaded my podcasts, the thumbnails for the podcasts are here. Let's go to episodes. And here is just a running list of all of those podcasts that you downloaded in order, right? So you can see podcasts that were uploaded December 9th, December 8th, December 7th, and so forth from all of my subscriptions. So it's easy and you can just click on this button here to stream it and you can listen to the podcast. So that is AntennaPod. Next up, you got apps, you got Auditor, uh, Aurora Store, no need to explain that. Bromite, still use Bromite. And the next app, Calculator, a calendar. Here I'm using Simple Calendar, which I absolutely love. Uh, this is a stock Graphene OS camera, which works fine for my use, clock, uh, here's a third-party app, Collabora Office. So with Collabora, what you can do is here on the plus sign on the bottom, you can create kind of like an Excel spreadsheet, a PowerPoint, or a 
or a doc, like a Word doc. Of course, all those three that I just said are Word products, but they're the equivalent, right? So spreadsheet, presentations, and basically a text document. So let's say I wanted to, you know, start writing a text document here, and you're gonna to wanna to choose where to save it. So I chose my folder. And now here on the bottom, you can click edit and then you can start typing away. You got your formatting options here. And once you're done, you can hit the save button, which is a check mark up there. Hit the check mark. And now if I go back, now we got this text document here. So that's Collabora Office. So you actually also need Collabora Office if you want to view Excel sheets, Word docs, and so forth that you get an email. So let's say you get an email with an attached Word doc. Without Collabora Office, if you try to open it, there's no default app that can open a Word doc or an Excel sheet. With Collabora Office installed, when you click on that Word doc in your email attachment, it'll automatically open in Collabora Office and uh, you can view that Word doc. And again, as most of my apps, I try to be very restrictive as far as like network access, sensors. So you can see that network is completely not allowed. So Collabora Office cannot send out any information, uh, which I, I doubt they will, but with Graphene OS, you can actually block those network connections, which is nice. Next, contacts. Droidify, so this is something that I changed. I was using F-Droid, I switched over to Droidify. I personally just like Droidify a little bit better, but it really doesn't, honestly, it doesn't matter. Files, self-explanatory. Forecasty, still using that as my weather app. And this is an awesome weather app. I mean, it gives you all of the information just right here, information that you need, no other uh, extra stuff, no ads or anything. So here today, New York City, you can see that uh, from four to 10 and it's in three hour increments, right? So it gives you the weather at 4 p.m., 7 p.m., 10 p.m. Then you can go into tomorrow, one, four, seven, so forth. Uh, gives you icons on if it'll be cloudy, overcast, um, sunshine, so forth. You can hit later to see days all the way through Thursday and Friday. And here is just a snapshot of what's happening right now. And then there's also at the top here, if I click on the three dots, go to graphs. Here it gives you a running chart of the next five days. So I can see what the temperature in New York City is gonna be like, if there's gonna be any rain over the next five days. So it looks like we got some rain tonight uh, into the middle of the night, no rain Monday. We're good all the way to Friday and we're gonna get some rain on Friday. So pretty, pretty good information, nicely laid out. Pressure, wind speed, humidity, all that stuff. So yeah, very great app. I definitely have no need to look for another weather app nor switch to another weather app. Uh, gallery, this is a simple gallery. So I, I use that over the standard Graphene OS gallery. Uh, one of the other big changes here uh, from the nine month video that I put out three months ago, I moved all of my passwords to KeePass DX. And KeePass is an offline password manager. So it's my responsibility to make sure that I have good backups of my passwords, I actually keep them on two uh, USB drives. And my plan is just to rotate out, you know, the USB drives often just in case they fail. but. I always back up um, occasionally on two USB drives just in case one of them fails, I always have a backup. Or if my, you know, if my phone fails, I have those two. I completely deleted my Bitwarden account and transferred everything over to there. So, and here again, long press key pass DX, go to app info. You can see there's no permissions granted. So everything is fully local. Nothing is being synced to the cloud. And that's not for everyone. Um, you know, like personally, my, my wife would never have something like this where you have to manually back up on your own and be responsible for your backups. So she uses, uh, she still uses Bitwarden because we're both on that and yeah, I, I think that's totally fine for 
the everyday user. And for me, this is all just a hobby. It's just purely fun. Like I could still be on Bitwarden and be totally fine. But for me, it's just super fun doing this kind of stuff and being into privacy and having control over my data. Next up, we got messages. That's just the standard Graphene OS text message app for SMS. We got new pipe, love new pipe. It's literally just a uh, YouTube front end, back end, no front end, I guess you call it. Uh, yep, so everything you can do on YouTube minus commenting, of course, because you're not logged in, but it pulls all the videos you can search for, for whatever you want. Here, organic maps, that's something new as well. So this is an offline navigation app. And in this app, you download your maps by states. So for this example, what I did, uh, let's find New York here, New York City. So we got New York City here, right? So if I try to zoom into New York, it says that in order to look at the actual streets, I need to download the New York City map. I did download the Connecticut map. Here's Connecticut here. So if I zoom into Connecticut, you can see that I can see all of the streets there. So if we go to the border of Connecticut and New York, oops, you can see here's, the, it's, sorry, it's asking me to download that map. All right, let's just kind of let's zoom out a little bit. There we go. So here's the border of New York, New York, Connecticut. Because I only downloaded the Connecticut map, I can see all the streets here, but not for New York. So whichever state you are in, just download the map for that state and you get a fully fledged map, navigation, you can search for landmarks and all that. So this is great. And of course, best of all, it's offline. If I long press organic maps, go to permissions. The only permissions I have is location, which is actually turned off by my global setting here. So you can see globally location is turned off. So even if this app has location allowed, um, it's still turned off because my global location is set to be off right now. But if I wanted to navigate, I would just set my global location to on. And now I would be able to uh, go into here. If I click on this, it'll show exactly where I am on the map and location will work perfectly fine, all without needing network access because all of the maps are downloaded locally on your device. So let's shut off location. We have PDF viewer here, the phone, self-explanatory. The next three are my Proton products. So I am a Proton Unlimited user. I use Proton Mail, Proton Drive, Proton VPN. So Proton Drive, I store all of my contents uh, onto Proton Drive. It's an end-to-end -end encrypted cloud storage service. Here, so here you can see that I've uh, organized everything into folders when I first get into my drive. And let's just go in. So like. In medical, if I click on medical, I've organized it by year. So all of my medical docs from 2021 are in here, all my medical docs 2022, and then I think another one. And so for personal, here you can see um, any site that I request data removal, I get an email. I just PDF that email and put that in here just for proof that yes, my data was removed. IDs, uh, identification, pictures of like my ID, passport, whatever, immunizations, vaccinations, all that stuff. So everything is end-to-end -end encrypted in here. And yeah, uh, the app on Graphene OS, Proton Drive, works perfectly fine. We got Proton Mail, and I'm not going to go in there because I don't want all my email to show. And it's been a nightmare trying to edit videos and trying to blur things out over the last several months. So won't go into that. Proton VPN here. As I mentioned, I'm a Proton Unlimited user, so I have access to all of the servers. And here I'm not connected to a VPN server, but it's super easy. You can just click on a country. Let's say that I wanted to connect 
to Argentina. I'm just gonna do this first server. I hit this power button and it is connecting to an Argentina server. And if I wanna disconnect, I just hit disconnect and I'm off of the server. So very easy app and straightforward. Here I got RH Voice and I've downloaded RH Voice because Graphene OS does not come with a text-to-speech uh, generator. So when I tried to navigate using organic maps in the car, without RH Voice, organic maps will not talk to me. So it's not gonna say, turn left in 500 feet or whatever. In order for that speech to work, you need RH Voice. So RH Voice, uh, you need network access to actually download the language that you want. I downloaded English. And if we go to settings, I think I downloaded two. Yeah, I downloaded English and Portuguese here. So once you download this and you go into, you go into accessibility, text to speech, and then this is typically empty, but because I downloaded RH Voice, now it has the ability to do text to speech in the language that you've downloaded. So I've downloaded English and Portuguese from RH Voice. So you can see that those two languages are here. And because my system language is in English, it'll automatically use that English text to speech. So then now with that app, and of course, once I download whatever I need, whatever speech I need, I go back to the app as usual, and I disable any of the permissions. So network, take that off once I've done downloading what I need. And now uh, I can be sure that everything I do is fully offline, but still having the full functionality of offline maps and the text-to-speech output where I'm navigating and it tells me turn left, turn right, exit whatever is coming up in 0.5 miles and all that stuff. Next, settings, we got signal. Here is simple login. I use simple login as my alias email service. So that app works perfect. Stock widgets, I love stock widgets. Um, here I track several ETFs, VT, a world stock ETF, got some value ETFs and then a bond ETF. This, this app is great. You can click on this button here. You can see what stocks are trending and some news related to the stock market. To add a new stock into here, you can click on the search button. And here it gives you several trending stocks. So if I wanted to follow Tesla, I can click on Tesla. I can hit the add button here. And now if I go back, and go to back to this watch list, we can see that Tesla is now part of my watch list. And you can also search for something. If I wanted to search for, what is something? An oil company, Exxon, I guess, or Oxy. I think Oxy is an oil company, right? Yeah, Occidental Petroleum, uh, search the ticker, OXY. You can hit plus from here. You can click on it and add it to your watch list. Next, Traveling Mailbox. I absolutely love this service. So anything that asks for my address that I don't wanna give my home address, I just give my Traveling Mailbox address. It all comes into, and the app works perfect. So it gets sent to a PMB location. It gets scanned in, uh, it shows up on the app. And yeah, it's really nothing critical. It's, it's mostly like junk mail anyway. So I'm not really too worried about uh, those individuals on the PMBN, you know, scanning my mail or looking at it. And they actually won't open your mail unless you actually tell them to open it. L and let me demonstrate that. So if I go into traveling mailbox and I'm gonna cover the mail, I think it shows up. I have one that's gonna show up. Here's one, there's the picture of the mail up here. Let me see if I can reveal that, yeah. So there's a scan picture of the mail right there. Uh, you can see that I received it on December 6th. And if I click request action, there's a whole bunch of actions that I can, I'm trying to cover the mail. <laughs> 
but there's a whole bunch of actions that I can do. So I can uh, have them actually open it and scan the contents, which they won't do until unless I click on that. Uh, if it's a check, you can actually have them deposit it, which I would probably stay away from. I would not be linking any of my bank accounts to this service. It's just something that I will absolutely not do, but I guess for people who want to do that, that's an option. Uh, but the main ones are these, right? So I can just actually have them shred it there. So if I see the mail get scanned in and I know it's junk mail, I'll just say, just shred it. Um, you can mark it as junk mail. And what else? And then you can forward. So if you forward it here, you can put in um, your actual address and they'll forward it over to you if it's something important. So yeah, that's that, but I'm gonna hit cancel. I only have one mail so far in here. Well, the rest I deleted, but if new mail comes in, it'll just show up all underneath here and you can you know, just scroll through all of your mail. And the last app is Vanadium. So that's just another browser app. So on my owner profile, these are all of the apps that I use. Almost all of them are from Jordify. Majority of them are open source. Majority of them are free and open source. There are just three that do not come from Jordify and I need to pull from a Rose store. So the first one of that would be Proton Drive. So which is interesting because Proton Mail and Proton VPN are in Jordify but not Proton Drive. So I'm not too sure if that's gonna change uh, anytime soon. Uh, the next one is Signal. So that you have to pull from Aurora Store. And the last one is Traveling Mailbox. That's Aurora Store. But everything else, simple login, RH Voice, Organic Maps, New Pipe, KeyPass, Collabra, that's all, uh, I believe, open source. Um, but at the very minimum, they're all from Jordify and pulled from Jordify. One thing that changed from my update three months ago was that I moved all of my banking and finance apps over to a separate profile. I moved my Tesla app to control my car over to its own profile. And then I moved Facebook, Facebook Messenger, and LinkedIn. But those are all on a separate profile. And I just keep those accounts open just in case someone wants to contact me, I can log in. But I'm rarely on that uh, profile, if, if ever. Maybe like once a month, I go in and check in. To go to different profiles, just swipe down. And here at the bottom, there's this uh, icon, click on that, and you can select your users. So these are the different uh, profiles that I have. Oh yeah, and the other one is work. For work, I need an authentication app to get into my VPN, which I've segregated over into work. And I've also put Zoom on there as well. So let's check these out. So let's go into work. You can see switching to work. Once I got my password, we're gonna go in and yeah, so my work uses TrueU. So when I need to log into VPN, I need to authenticate through TrueU. And the other one is Zoom. So really that's the only two apps other than the standard apps that I have on this profile. So I've segregated my work apps over into here. I always take my Zoom calls from my laptop, but if there is ever a need when I absolutely need to get onto Zoom, which I have used Zoom once on this phone and it was for a uh, school parent-teacher conference. <laughs> um, so yeah, Zoom works perfect. And how I use Zoom is I don't log in. So I'm not logging into Zoom. I'm not signing in. What I do is I just get the meeting ID from the meeting invite and I go to join meeting and I put the meeting ID in and I join. Um, so I, I personally don't want to sign into as much as possible any of my accounts into here unless absolutely needed. And I'm glad Zoom doesn't force you to sign in. So that, that's good, I guess. So join a meeting, I put in the meeting ID and yep, and it, it worked perfect. All right, so let's check out uh, the Tesla profile. So if we go into there and here, it's just the Tesla app along with KeyPass and Aegis. Um, just in case Tesla logs me out, I got my passwords. 
in here. But yep, just the Tesla app. And I rarely use the app. Um, I do not have my phone synced Bluetooth to the car, which I know most people do. So, you know, you, do, you actually don't need a key. You can just walk up to your car. It senses your phone near it and you, it unlocks it for you. I don't do that with my phone. So Tesla's come with an actual physical key card that you can touch on the door. That's the method I use. I only use the app, not for the Bluetooth syncing, because for me, Bluetooth is actually always off. Um, but I just go in there every so often, like if it's a cold day, I'll jump into this profile, go into the app, preheat the car, and then, cause we live in the Northeast, so it can get down to single digits, uh, preheat the car, and that's really the extent I use it for. Like normal, everyday, locking, unlocking, I use my key card to get in. Click on profiles, let's go to the next one. We'll go to social. And here I have Facebook Lite, which is a super, uh, stripped down version of the actual app. It's just two megabytes in size. So downloading and updating the app is super, very quick. Uh, Messenger and LinkedIn. So as I mentioned, I'm never in this profile. Maybe once a month, I would go into LinkedIn and just check, uh, check to see if I got any messages from like friends in here. But all three works perfect on Graphene OS. And last but not least, let's go to the banking. So here you can see I got three apps, Ally, Chase, Vanguard. Ally works beautifully. Uh, I can look at all of my accounts. I have an Ally Invest account as well. Um, I can go in, see my investments in that. And one of the questions that I've had several times are about mobile deposits with checks. And I can confirm that Ally can deposit your mobile checks. So you can go through the mobile check deposit process, take a picture of the front, take a picture of the back, submit it. And with Ally, my checks deposit within two days. So yes, I can say that that works. Vanguard also works perfectly. I can do everything that my iPhone app can do. So with those two, we're great so far. Now with Chase, in my video three months ago, uh, with the nine month update, the Chase app worked and I opened the Chase app. I, I showed that it opened. However, today, December, 2022, if I go to Chase, it no longer works. So that's something that is new. Um, one way to get it to work is if you long press the Chase app, go to app info, and you have to enable exploit protection compatibility. And what this does is it improves compatibility with misbehaving apps by using Android standard address space, size, and memory allocator. So once you do that, and now we click on the Chase app, you can see that we can log into the app. I actually cannot confirm that when enabling that exploit protection that you can actually still log in. So the app opens, but I have no clue if you can log in because I've never tried it. For me, I don't want to enable all of that extra stuff. Like I'm totally fine working with my device in a restrictive mode. That's, that's totally just me. So I haven't used the Chase app in about a month and a half now. How I go on to Chase, I just pull up Vanadium, I go to chase.com, I log in as a web page, and I do all my activities through the web page. You cannot do mobile deposits, but I have a Chase literally just right down the road. So if I need to deposit money, I just drive two seconds down the road. So in summary, this is a long video, but I really wanted to go into detail of all of the apps that I use with my Graphene OS device and the changes since my nine month update. Overall, contrary to what people say, Graphene OS is a very, very usable device. I've been using it for one year. I have absolutely no need to go back to an Apple iOS device. Hope this video helps. Let me know if you have any questions below.